Good morning, everybody, everybody, good morning. Ground rising. Happy Thursday? I think it's Thursday. <laughs> I know you don't really keep track of the days. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Good morning. How are we all? Oh, so I'm here in the wonderful North Yorkshire in my gorgeous friend's yurt. She has the most incredible space and the most incredible everything. <laughs> um, and I've got the honor of being here for a fortnight, um, looking after the space and setting it up. Um, so it's just, it's wonderful. I, for anyone that's kind of been on this channel for a little while, you'll see that I kind of frequent yurts quite a bit um, and live in them when I can, because they're just, they're wonderful, they're delightful. They are just this sacred womb space. There is something very special about spending time or living in a round home. It's phenomenal. So, um, so I just thought I'd do a little live to say hello to everybody. Um, for those that have been following my Insta stories, you'll be, you'll know that I'm starting a drive fast tomorrow, a long extended one. I'm really excited about that. So, um, I've been preparing my body, right? I've been preparing my body a little bit, but I thought, okay, let's just first kind of talk about starting, starting your day in a year. <laughs> Because I don't know, uh, I don't know whereabouts in the world you are, but I'm in the UK and there's been a storm blowing through the whole country. So um, I got asked by quite a few people last night, "Are you okay in the yard?" <laughs> because of the storm and all the wind, and I'm like, "Absolutely, absolutely." Yurts are really sturdy things, um, windproof, waterproof. But it, it does make me laugh because there is a carpet on the floor, and every now and then, um, like if there's a big gust of wind. <laughs> You see this um, this kind of ripple effect, this tidal wave go across the carpet because the wind's gone underneath. <laughs> but it's all it's all safe and it's really cozy. Um, when I when I live, oh, oh hi from California. What's the weather like there? Is it sunny? We always hear in the UK that it's just sunny in California. It's always sunny. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd love to know. Um, oh, it's the evening time, I guess, for you, hey. Um, but yeah, no. So you you want to you need to get the yurt warm first. So a lot of a lot of yurts um, would have a fire, right? So there's a nice fire here. Let me see if I can move the camera. So I've got the fire going. I have a little pan of cacao. Well, I'm on a water fast today before I go into my extended dry fast. And um, so yeah, so no no cacao for a few days at least. Um, but yeah it's just it's a beautiful space so um i tend to especially when i'm living in a year i always tend to be going through some type of kind of really beautiful spiritual initiation and uh this time is no different right it's uh, no different so i always find i don't know about you let me know let me know how you find this as well but when when i fast more if i water fast or if i dry fast or juice or anything like that or if I'm in alignment I should say I should just kind of put it like that if I'm in alignment and um, being in the present moment I find that I actually don't need as much sleep so I'll get maybe around three or four hours and be really replenished after that because um, most of the human body needs you know seven eight hours because of everything that we're eating and because when we're out of alignment in the day right it takes energy up and we have to restore that and move back into alignment but for those people that are in that present moment more and more um, and consistently through the day, they sleep very little. Um, so you'll find this if you look at anyone who is, you know, leading, you know, who's living that life and teaching or anything like that. Um, oh, it's cold and windy in Northern California, but the mountains sound amazing. Gosh, I um, I've only ever really visited the mountains once and that's when I lived in Edmonton in Canada. And um, I visited, Banff a few times um, and that was just I used to find it so profound when you would just start to get close to any of the mountain range and it's like this um, divine stillness comes over you you know the elementals of the mountains you know you can just feel their presence and it's just it's quite ineffable really to describe for anyone that's not been there um, but I can't imagine how beautiful it would be to, to live near the mountains. Although the elementals, the wind elementals, as you're saying, are keeping it quite entertaining. 
Oh, uh, hi, Eva. Oh, you're on the East Coast. Yeah, the moon's been beautiful, hey. I've actually been able to see it. Not right now, um, but like last night, I could see the moon through the, um, like the window at the top of the yurt. And you could hear the rooster next door. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's beautiful, hey? All that cosmic divine love coming through, all the, uh, the archangels, the angelics working together to bring a lot of uh, light through, to help us clear out emotional baggage, right? To help us clear through what we can't really take forward, right? You know, everyone asks, don't they? For, you know, on a soul level, we ask for expansion. We ask for bliss, for abundance, for happiness, for love. You know, we ask for all that, but then we, we have to actually clear the emotions, right? So full moons are wonderful for helping us be aware because it like, it's like it shines a magnifying glass on what we're actually feeling. So anyone that doesn't acknowledge that, you know, they tend to feel it more as, as the story goes, you know, but. Uh, oh, you're about to do a full moon ritual. Well, enjoy, enjoy. Thank you for sharing that. I send you so much love and so much love and so many blessings for that. I'm sure it'll be so powerful. So enjoy that. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's wonderful to be in a year. The first thing you want to do though, like, you know, you want to, <laughs> when you, when you start your day, especially in winter, <laughs> as we are in the Northern hemisphere, you know, you want to start the day by lighting a fire, <laughs> really lighting the yurt up, lighting a fire, right? Um, for anyone that practices like Wim Hof breathing or, or just understands how to do fire, fire breath, right? You know, you can warm yourself up really quite quickly. Um, just through your breathing alone. But for me, um, today I um, I have a slight kind of, um, I, used, I used to have a lot of allergies, right? A lot of allergies. And we know that allergies are just resistance and memory patterns and things like that. And I had them all cleared through a process called NATE, right? Which is like very advanced kinesiology. It was founded by this wonderful doctor in India. Um, and you can essentially remove all your allergies, right? And it's non-invasive or anything like that. You're just kind of poking your body in certain places when you're doing certain breathing. But in 2019, I think it was, 2019 through 2020, <clears throat> about halfway through the year and kind of going for a full year because of the amount of intolerances and allergies and things like that that I came into this earth body with, you know, there was a lot that I was clearing through. So this wonderful practitioner called Carrie, um, she, and she's in North, no, she's in Buckinghamshire. Um, she essentially removed all these allergies. So like I was a celiac and, you know, I used to get anaphylactic from cats and straw and dust and things like that. Um, and fire, the smoke from a wood fire specifically is one of those that I haven't yet fully cleared. So today I will be clearing that allergy <laughs> because, um, yeah, because I go into this dry fast and I want to be able to, and today I'm prepare, uh, preparing, so I'm water fasting today. So I want to clear that allergy, um, you know, whilst, I still, whilst, whilst I'm still drinking water because the water is going to flush out the way that fasting works, you know, when we compare it to the elements, um, you know, when we compare it to the elements, the, when we eat food, that's the element of earth, right? When we do a water fast, we stop the earth and we're using the water to purify and to cleanse, right? And clear through, which is really powerful when, you know, we're made of like 80% plus of water. But when you do a dry fast, there's no water and no food, right? For an extent, for however long. Most people do, um, you know, uh, one day on dry fasting. Um, and everyone intermittently fasts overnight, whether you realize it or not when you sleep, right? For at least however long you sleep for. But um, I'm gonna be doing a three and a half day. And what happens then is the element of fire comes in to purify, right? And cleanse, and it cleanses through physically, it resets your immune system, it resets your body, it resets your cells, right? And that fire essentially destroys anything that doesn't serve in, and it's, it's very, very powerful. Um, you know, emotionally, it will allow you to release what no longer serves, right? Emotions that have been stored, because a lot of the, the water in our body actually stores a massive amount of cellular memory, right? Because it's the emotional body as well, it compares to the emotional body. So when you are using the element of fire, because um, that prana, right, because that's what it is, you're using the, 
the um, the breath of life. You're using that inner sun, right? You know, you're um, working with the, the life force um, that is coming down from the sky. Whether you've got clouds or not, we have a lot of clouds in the UK, but don't worry, you can still do this. Um, and it's the start of uh, the breatharian journey for anyone that is interested um, in that. There's a guy that I follow on Instagram called um, Elitam Elamine, and he's been a breatharian for over 20 years. Can you imagine 20 years without needing to have any food or drink because you've remembered the bodily autonomy, right? Um, that your cells actually are able to do. This is what all the walking masters, right? The ascended masters were able to do. They'd practice this and they would fast and dry fast from a very young age, right? Very well practiced thing. So I'm really excited because it's the first one that I've done for this length of time. So anyway, getting back to the year. <laughs> it is very cozy in here. Thank you. Yes, it is. It's stunning. Um, yeah, because the lady that uh, owns it, my, my dear friend, she's called Nikki. She's um, she does ceremonial cacao, right? She's, um, she does ceremonial cacao, cacao uh, rituals and ceremonies and um, has these beautiful throws and things like that. So, you know, you could not get a cozier yurt because she, she literally sells coziness for a living. Um, <laughs> it's profound, it's wonderful. Um, but yeah, I've got it all lit up with the candles and everything until the sun rises and it's just wonderful to kind of have that space and for anyone that doesn't really get away a lot you know I would highly recommend you know any if, if you can get away for like three days just to kind of give yourself a break because what I find in these spaces as well if there are any yurts nearby you what I find in these spaces is that because you are working with the elements you're lighting a fire you are in that stillness you know you're able to start your day with meditation with breath work you're able to move and flow you're very grounded because you're on the earth in this round space it's just it's, del it's delightful it's really delightful so i just wanted to say hello to everybody and um i wish you all a wonderful thursday a wonderful rest of your week and um you know i hope that your full moon went well how did you find it it was a very powerful one because we had mars and venus conjunct right so with that divine masculine energy that, with divine feminine energy conjunct in the sky up in capricorn right and you know the divine masculine uh oh sorry mars in our natal chart you know governs will right how we go forward with our will right and venus is that divine feminine it's everything about beauty magnetism you know mars is that electricity venus is the magnetism right the divine masculine the di divine feminine so it's also really interesting how they go together um with you know with how we are sexually as well right because wherever your venus is whatever sign it's in, in your natal chart will be how you kind of, you know, flirt. It's also, you know, to do with money and to do with beauty and, and just pleasures of life, Venus. But, you know, when we look at um, a relationship uh, basis or um, sexuality, because we're human beings, right? We want to be physical because we want to experience these sensations and these um, relationships. But it's really interesting because when you have a, your Venus uh, in a particular sign you know you'll have those characteristics come through and that's the magnetism of you that's kind of how you would like play around a little bit kind of flirt a little bit but it's mars right it's your wherever your mars is that's the electric that's the will that's the driving force so like when you know when you've actually kind of got past the whole flirtation stage you know that's the um mars wherever your mars is um you know that's kind of how you are in the relationship so it can be quite interesting if you've got for say for example a fire sign venus right so like venus and leo is very playful right very playful very kind of buoyant and you know kind of keeps it fun right but then you know your mars may be um in an air sign right which may be a little bit more intellectual Right? or maybe in an earth sign, so it may be a little bit more grounded and steady and slow. So it's really interesting when you look at how they play around a little bit with each other, because they do represent um, you know, divine masculine, divine femi feminine within us and around us. Ooh, Scorpio, my moon's in Scorpio and my Pluto. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I used to, um, I used to date someone who has a Venus in Scorpio and they can yeah absolutely it can be very intense that scorpio energy but what i love about scorpio and what i find is so always misinterpreted is that where one would call it intense another would call it 
intentional, right? So for me, like when I, when I connect to someone, because of my moon as well, because obviously, you know, your moon sign is going to show us your uh, emotional body, right? Your inner workings. And also, it also shows your inner child wounding as well. So, you know, if you want to work with your inner child, look where your moon is, right? Because that's probably what you need the most of is whatever that moon sign is. But um, so I have a Scorpio moon. So whenever I connect with anyone, it like they know, they feel that magnetism, right? You know, they they are the only person that I see. Whereas like if you were, for example, a moon in Gemini, you may be very social butterfly, right? So when when you want to look at that in, you know, in your Venus, you know, that connection, um, that magnetism is going to be very powerful for you if you've got Venus in Scorpio, right? But yeah, um, you can tend to overthink things a little bit though, right? Scorpios tend to kind of see through all the dimensions, right? Which can be a little bit off-putting for some people who are not used to that. <laughs> You're an Aries. An Aries Venus, Michelle, or an Aries Sun? I love Aries. One of my friends has got uh, Mars in Aries. And um, I just, I admire her drive and her will and her able to, her ability to just kind of say, right, okay, this is what I'm doing. And she just gets it done. And I'm like, how, how did you do that? That was just really quick. And um, yes, Eva is so, so intuitive and magne uh, magnetic. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, we can tend to overthink relationships though when we've got a Scorpio, a uh, Venus Scorpio, right? we can tend to kind of see things that sometimes aren't fully there and we create them because that's what we see and we're so used to seeing around us, right? Because it's there energetically somewhere, but it's whether it's within our partner or not, that's the other question, right? Ah, oh, you've got a sun in Aries. Your sun, your star sign is Aries. Yeah, I love that, the instigator, right? The start of the zodiac new year. Yeah, I absolutely love that. That Aries energy, you always feel it when it comes around, hey? You always feel it and it's wonderful. It's like, it literally is like a fire has been lit underneath you to just go, 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 go. And I think as well, is Aries not governed by Mars? I think as well. It's like, that's its home sign. Um, so yeah, it'll be really interesting when Mars does move into Aries as well and just see how that will play out for you, Michelle, um, in a few months time when the planet Mars um, so it all kind of dance very nicely with your sun sign, right? So, yeah, very powerful conjunction right now. A lot of people are finding, um, you know, very heightened um, creative energy, which also is sexual energy, right? Heightened sexual energy, um, which, you know, births new things, right? It's a very creative and fertile time when Mars and Venus are doing this very funky dance and they're going to be doing this dance together for a good few months now right for a good few months and as they transit through you know Capricorn Aquarius Pisces Aries you know until one of them goes retrograde again or one of them moves because I've got a slightly different orbit but yeah always fun to think about oh I, I enjoy thinking about that anyway but yeah for now I'm gonna love you and leave you the wind is picking up a little bit again and I'm going to do some, um, some type of movement, um, some type of bodily movement to build up the prana a little bit in my body and get me ready to get me ready to greet the sunrise. So I send you all so much love and so many blessings. And um, for those that have been inquiring about when my next one to ones are, I am booked up until the start of March now. So any angelic guidance, quantum healing, past life regression, um, priestess initiation, any of those uh, bookings, uh, I'm booking into March right now. So two week wait. Okay. Send you so much love and keep tuned for, um, I'm going to vlog, I'm going to send a video out each day as to how the drive fast goes, how the pranic initiation goes. So I'm really excited. See you later, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Love and light to you too, Eva. Thank you. And thank you, Michelle. Sweet dreams. Yes, sweet dreams to you. Bless you.